so we can give the disease free environment also and so that we stop uh, the rapid growth of the pests also and all this contributes to the food safety food safety which is our ultimate goal and which is the requirement foremost requirement of the time these all three steps comes into the food safety itself and this pest control comes into the prp i hope you have you are aware about the prp what the, the prp of the processes are these are the prerequisite programs which are the pre requirement as the name mentioned pre requirements of any process to run the process to start the process as one of them for most is a cleaning like small example is that that you can't cook your food in unclean utensils you can't cook your food in unhygienic area so the prp one of the prp is first you have to clean all that area utensils so that you can cook your food so that cleaning is one of the prp and another prp is your pest controls so that you can control your all these environment cleaning and uh, disease free environment you can provide so how to control all these pests so people are saying that pest control is prevent the excess excess like we should prevent their entry into our system this can be done with the help of certain designs either it is building design some engineering designs and some proper designing of the buildings and proper designing of the doors windows proper designing of your drainages and all those still sometimes if stop suppose these we can't do this and they enter into our premises so we should stop harbors and infestation of those things we should not give them the shelter we should not give allow them to grow to breed so this is one another thing if suppose these are entering into our system and eat our food and after eating our food they become like larger in number then our system is yes we have to monitor those detect those and after monitoring we have to eradicate those nowadays uh, many people are mentioning this 4d from this is newer term in the pest control itself this 4d for the pest control or 4d pest control sometimes they are saying so four d's are first d is deny entry second d is deny shelter third d is shelter and food itself third d is detect and fourth d is destroy and likewise all these four d's are we can we have discussed in the pest control system like prevent thing excess harbonage and infestation monitoring and detection and then eradication in first d is in the prevent excess deny entry deny shelter and food then detect and destroy so another like precautions we have to take what the what type of the precautions we can take as a food technologist as we know this that there is a separate team some sometimes people are saying uh that there are separate team or separate department to control all these pest control and all so our first and foremost thing is we should report the infestation immediately to our that department which is controlling all those and uh, another thing is you are not supposed to use pesticides or insecticides in the food processing area if you are not expert yes if you are expert and from the department of pest control or you are pest control expert sometimes like we are we may not be pest control expert we may be the food expert so do not use these pesticides and insecticides without your like good knowledge so let's discuss about these pests one by one and how we can eradicate all those pests cockroaches these as we know about this the cockroaches are found in the kitchens manufacturing area restaurant social blocks stores also and uh, changing areas also 
and these do not require the human food even and they they can feed themselves on the white wash itself so how it means they are not competing with us for food but what they are doing is they contains like seven kinds of human pathogens and 33 kinds number of the bacteria and they reproduce or rapid very like fast or reproducing very rapid and they, they carry the debris in the germs on their legs from the sewage and transfer to our equipments of the processing and to the areas of the processing like if you if you visit your kitchen in the late night hours you can see some cockroaches moving around if it is like you are not controlling them very well they are moving they are re, uh, coming out from the sewage and moving on on different areas of your processing labs or something like that so how we can avoid all those we can prevent their entries yes with the hygienic engineering and if with the like with a good frequency of high disposal of our food and waste or you can say for the disposal or clean of our dust bins or like some debris which are containing some wet food or something like that so whenever auditor will come into your premises they will check your dust bin first and if i am or some good auditors will be in a your premises for the audit they can tell everything about your premises by just checking your dust bins and so another thing is their life span is around about 4 months or more than that also so pest control teams are using like chlorodecon which are insecticides to remove all those they are using into the drains which are well cleaned itself and sometimes they are using some glue pads also to detect if they there is some cockroaches or not cockroaches are present or not present sometimes uh, some people asked me in the some lectures like sir suppose if some parts of the cockroaches are present in our food suppose lag is present in our food so what type of hazard it is there are three types of hazards biological physical and chemical so if only one lag is present then what type of hazard it is so it is physical hazard it's not biological it's because it is not containing the whole living organism over there it is not living and it can cause illness also because of the physical hazards that's why it is physical hazards another thing is about the rat and mice or you can say rodents these are found in the processing area stores and kitchens and social blocks also these can be controlled with the hygienic storage and disposal or the food waste and these rats are making their houses or their harbonizes area near the food itself they are not habitual of moving like for a longer distance they make their hides near the food itself and how they can damage our proper, they can damage our food is they can cut wires in our machines they can cut the plastic parts also or sometimes wooden parts also and damage to the property yes machinery is also and they can contaminate our products or processing area by droppings their fur urine and sometimes they they can transmit the hazardous microorganisms also or sometimes hazardous parasites also if you had heard about the plague the plague is transferred by the mice so how to eradicate those we can use uh, baits for that fumigation and trapping we can use how to trap all this like uh, in between this yellow blue one is the trap over there and these uh, all these are traps where to place all those traps is because rodents have the moving habits near the ball so always place place your 
traps near the wall sometimes these traps are containing like glue pads also to facilitate more trapping of these rodents another pest is silver fish these are silver gray insect that looks like minute fish without fins and these yes the silver fish adults can be killed by freezing and something like that but not the rags you can't kill and uh, if we have the processing of the fruits and vegetable and poultry and other meat products or food products we are giving all those a depression or dispersion of the borax or boric acid around about all those things about our in, in the surrounding of our food so with this boric acid and borax which is not harmful even on the floor itself not on the food on the floor which is not coming into the direct contact with our food so this boric acid can kill easily these uh, silver fishes and sometimes people are like what they they are doing is they are taking wet cloth and using some sugar on that and put in near the areas where the silver fish can hide so this is the perfect bait for the silver fishes uh, to catch them and to kill those silver fishes another is uh, house fly this can breed on the human and animal excreta and they also can breed on the decaying and fermented foods also they can't breed on dry matter and yes they can trans transfer disease different types of disease either in their secretion which they are secreting to dissolve the food or on their legs or something like that we can control these flies by keeping our area dry and clean and sometimes people are using insectocutors also and somebody are saying some some industries are saying electrocutors these so these are containing some blue lights and having a good elect voltage into this and when this flies and mosquitoes and fleas beetles even the, sometimes weevils also are attracted towards these blue lights and when they are moving towards it they come encounter with some high voltage current and because of that high voltage you can remove those but another thing is uh, when you are using this insectocutors and electrocutors with the shock or with this fire or with this spark these can move towards your food areas like sometimes the shock itself they can fly towards your areas although it is killed but still it is a hazard so how to use this insectocutor and where to use in these insectocutors also should be into your checklist sometimes people are using glue pads also in this insectocutor so that whatsoever is coming into the contact with high voltage should not move away another is flea they they bite their host and causing irritations and red itching spots on the skin found in then has in conditions their entry to the clean places is entirely ex accidentally and another thing is they are founding especially in the areas where we are processing meat and poultry products you can find them over there mosquitoes yes presence of water is essential for their existence and these prefer the dark areas and control measure is keep your areas dry and clean we know all of us know about this because this is very common pest in our houses also so you can install insectocutors and electrocutors to kill them another are like beetles and moths and their larvas these are pests in their larval stage if you had seen some close connections in between machines you can find their larva easily and especially those close connections which are having certain high humidity or high moisture suppose if we have a close connection between two pipes in which some wet floor is flowing through pneumatic conveying system so you can find these larvas and these moths around these if your area is having humidity and your product is having moisture 
these are having four life stages like egg larva pupa and adult so larva is difficult to kill itself and difficult to visualize also pupa and adults can be easily controlled with this insect insectocutor and all yes you can use the control measures like naphthalene ball camphor tablets and you clean keep your areas clean then it can be used removed another is like sometimes people are saying these are the cloth moths and larvae and these are found in the cloth connections and uh, these prefer damp dampness so you have to check your cloth connections on the regular basis with a good checklist with a good frequency and the frequency what this frequency can be once per day two or twice per day or something like that no you have to decide it as per your confidence level decide this frequency if you want to check these cloth connections after one week you can decide it but within that one week there should not be any breeding of this larva presence of this larva means whenever you are checking your cloths you should not find any larva into that if you are find suppose i am checking my cloth connection after two days and i i am finding larva over there then i have to reduce or increase my frequency reduce the time i have to check these on daily basis suppose on the daily basis also if i am finding those larvas i have to check my cloth connections on 6 hours or shift wise also so based on that my confidence level our confidence level we have to check all those cloth connections to avoid these larvas another thing is we should avoid humidity in areas which are having humidity less than 50% these larvas are not able to breed and yes we use the clean cloth connections for that another pest which is commonly found is like lizards and is these are found in almost every part of the world there are more than 6000 varieties or species of the lizards are there which are hiding species are they preferred and you can remove those with the help of the glue traps and all those and another thing is uh, which is can cause damage to our products are or when our raw material is arrived into our premises or our finished product is ready to dispatch to the market these are the biggest role players to spoil that those products and contaminate those products so physical damage by these can also do the physical damage to our premises by blocking the gutter systems with their nest and feathers their these bird droppings which are containing very harmful pathogens also like salmonella viruses cause and fungi and even these bird droppings are very poisonous in nature and their nesting material and their feathers can contaminate our food so how we can remove all those with the help of we can install the spikes like suppose where the pigeons are sitting on in your this in this picture you can put certain spikes over there then these are not able to sit on your outside walls you can install certain nets over there so that these should not enter into your premises and sometimes people are using wire barriers also mechanical traps also and some shock device also what are the threats which what these or this uh, pests can cause to our food business they can spread disease through a transfer of pathogens yes these can they can damage our properties like rodents and break our wires or the plastic parts of our machineries they can contaminate our food products and workstation also and this will bring the bad reputation and loss of credit to your brand and your industry so this may lead to prosecution also and the closure of those industries also if you are giving this type of the things how to control all these things is first and foremost is first day is deny the entry or you can say deny the entry is how we can or prevent access how we can do that 
with the building good building design engineering design of the building which can prevent the pests like wall design concrete suitable, suitable floor floor smooth roofs tight fitting doors good lighting drain designings drains are so designed that water should not be stagnant in the processing area itself or these are so perfectly screened that sometimes people are putting screens on the drains so that something rodents and cockroaches from the drains should not enter into our production area another is we have to focus on the maintenance maintenance preventive maintenance like rodent proofs all doors and walls we have to check all those on the regular basis we have to screen all those windows which can be opened or if you don't want to open those windows then fix the glasses or fix those windows so that anything should not enter into that we should eliminate cracks crevices and we should the recess and glazes for the ease of cleaning and elimination of the potential pest harbonases in those eliminate the access to glazes and roofing areas for bread uh, birds locate equipment of the floor we should keep our equipments at least 6 inches above the floor so that we can easily clean those another term which is there into the food industry is hard to reach areas hra or htr sometimes people are saying hard to reach so these hard to reach areas are those where we are not able to reach easily for the cleaning purpose so if you will keep your equipments 6 inches or more than that above the floor you can easily clean your areas and beneath those equipments you should like store your products or equipments at least 1 feet away from the walls so that easily cleaning process can be over there seal the equipments to walls or and or the floors also another control measures are proper drainage no stagnant water should be there screening of the building mosquito net net another is proper fumigation sometimes you have to do like whenever you have the shutdown in your area you have to use the good fumigation fumigation is a method of pest control that completely fills an area with gaseous pesticides to suffocate or or poison the pests some non chemical managements are like consider various type of the rodents in secondary bird traps not only traps blue trap you can use maintain adequate housekeeping programs in your area implement control or monitoring programs including pheromone tracks and traps pheromone you can't kill the pest with a pheromone but yes you can detect those uh, pests with the pheromone like sometimes people are using those pheromones to detect the presence of weevils and beetles in their area and you have to establish a well designed in plant sanitation program which should be validated and with the and designed by the experts including your management because if management is not willing to design such programs to design such uh frequencies then it is difficult to control all those and one more thing is the buyback cost or you can say cost buyback is very high or into this this program you can save lot of money from this type of the programs or you can say these are the quality investment whenever we are using the some okay let's discuss about some chemical controls and their regulations and application yes pesticides are regulated by the fifra which is the federal insecticide fungicides and rodenticide act which is 
given by the FDA and FAO also with the codex alimentarius with the help of the codex itself and those labels should be as per this FIFA itself and uh, sometimes typical labels are having wording such as for the food areas and in the food areas it is limited to cracks and cervices treatment only not for the food products application and application of this product in the food areas of the food handling establishment other than as a crack and cervice treatment is not permitted so where to apply this when we have to apply these pesticides we have to understand very well about our food our food processing facility and non food areas yes these insecticides pesticides should not come into direct contact with food but these should not come in the direct contact with those areas also where the food is coming into contact so whenever if these are having certain residues over there then it is difficult to manage those pesticide residues in this yes in non food areas you can spray some pets pesticides and insecticides over there another is uh, what should the this in plant sanitation program should contain it should contain like what is our goal which type of the insects and pests we have to target and what are our inspection areas like some people are using like physical presences somebody is saying that i haven't seen the beetle or weevil in the area so why i will spray or why i will use that frequency and sometimes some people are using pheromone traps to check it out that these are having pheromone uh, this they are having some pests into that their area another is utilization of those that in plant sanitation program and yes follow up for that also follow up means of continuous improvement of that also it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that this is a bible of our area and we will not able to change it whenever there is a requirement to change that we should change that means change doesn't mean to ease ourselves for the improvement of our sanitation program we can do the some or incorporate certain changes in that yes if there are certain pests in our that area then we have to manage those crises and the best time to learn how to manage a crisis is not in the crisis we have to do practice 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 and practice itself again and again and we have to communicate about these things to with each other communication is the key over here suppose one thing is there in my area it doesn't mean that that will not be in your area sometimes this will be in your area distant areas also and we have to communicate it about it throughout our food supply chain and we have to follow international standards like iso standards and fsms food safety management systems thank you if you have any questions related to this you can ask me Uh, thank you sir welcome uh, sir some questions are coming in uh, chat box okay like so devkant adlal is asking which bacteria can be spread by pests four most important bacteria is salmonella campylobacter e coli like sewage contaminations are there i as isertia coli as i told you that pests can come from the drain drainage system and 
they can carry certain microorganisms. First thing is this. Another is they can harbor these microorganisms, especially Salmonella, which is the biggest threat to our food safety system. And uh, Ruchi is present. How do we control weevils in the food grains? Okay, thank you. This is my favorite topic, eh? how to control the weevils. Yes, you. what you can do is, first thing is you have to detect these, if these, these are present or not. Sometimes people are using some checklists for the pheromone traps. They are putting pheromone tra traps into different areas, especially where the wheat flour or cereals are present because these weevils are attacking mainly on the cereals and the, especially wheat flour. So we have to put our pheromone traps in that area. If you are getting any single grain of that weevil, then what you have to do, you have to fumigate that area. One thing, fumigation is the best practice with which you can kill the contaminated areas. Another thing is, and much bet best practice is deny that those entries. Yes, which chemicals you can use, phosphates you can use, those can produce the phosgene gases. Phosgene gases which is coming into the contact with these areas can kill our, uh, these weevils. And uh, these are not giving this. Okay, suppose oats have weevils present, what we can do? First thing is, this should not be present over there, weevils. And uh, if these are present on the upper surface of your, suppose, bag, check it out that how many, many weevils are there. Suppose upper surface of the bags are containing the weevils, then fumigate that that area and store the, the, those bags into a area where these are can be fumigate closed area and then fumigate another thing is if you want to check these with some equipment there are some equipments like antivulators are also even count those weevils and can move those weevils sometimes x-rays also can help you out to reject those products which are containing the weevils. How we can control pest in floors? Okay. Store those in the airtight containers. Don't allow the air to come inside because pests as these are living entity need oxygen to respire, to breed, to reproduce. And if you will not allow them to breed, if you will not allow them to respire, they can't multiply into your into your food system. Hmm? So best thing is can, uh, store your products in silos, which are like, uh, okay. Another thing is uh, how we can keep Merda in airtight container. The basic packaging that we receive is a plastic sack. Hmm. Good. So, you are receiving into the plastic bags. So you can store into the silos which are airtight. And sometimes people are using nitrogen gas to flush them the empty space of those silos. And another thing is, if you are getting those that uh, flour in, in the air plastic sacks or plastic bags, ask the supplier to provide into the hermetic seal bags. Milled floors have more shelf life or the granite milled floor. Because the granite flour is having the germ part into this and which is having the rancidity problem into this. Or more oil present in this, uh, fats are present into that granite flour. And uh, another thing is uh, that's why milled flour are having better shelf life. Okay, any question? Any other question? What is the basis difference between chakki and mill data? Okay. Let's discuss about this thing. Uh, although it's not uh, my topic, this was delivered by Dr. Navnidhi Chikara two days back, I think. Still, I can discuss about it. Is Chakki flour is like uh, we are grinding our flour or grains into a compact chamber and we are having sieve 
on the outlet of that compact chamber which is having a fixed size and our moving part has to grind those grain grains up to that particle size up to that time unless or until these are moving out from that screen that's why our flour is having high temperature when we are grinding in chakki or some grinder and mill data is passed through first reduction rollers where we are removing the outer bran with the help of some moisture content and after that we are reducing the particle size of the endosperm part itself so the temperature is not increased much into this okay so it is a difference between this as a model present how to keep bugs out of pulses nice question again so if you had seen another is first thing is can we store fruits after cutting in container freeze yes we can freeze them after cutting but for like uh, you can't uh, apply the same solution to every fruit because every fruit is different entity their respiration rate is different their living shelf life or is also different as the respiration if you have seen the this respiration curve that is entirely different for every fruits and even within the variety also this can can change so if you can study that properly you can store them yes freezing can be one of the method in the container freeze we can use this but not like at 4 degree or 5 degree itself sub zeros you can ask how to keep bugs out of pulses is first thing is like pulses which we have the grain itself when you are splitting those pulses these bugs are not attacking those grain uh, pulses the whole grains are attacked by some beetles jewels also so first method is one and foremost is this thing like do not allow to respire those bugs or do not allow the entries keep them in the air tight container i had seen like some traditional uh, containers were there where the people are filling up to the brim and up to the brim they are filling because they want that every air which is present into that or to minimize the air quantity into that container if they can fill that up to that brim so uh, you can can allow you can't allow them to breed and another thing is if you had seen their behavior these beetles or these pests are coming on the upper surface by moving themselves or lighter grains are coming on the upper surface which are containing these beetles so if you will stop this movement if you can stop this movement of the grains from bottom to upper surface then you can able to survive your pulses or you can able to store your pulses ravi kumar to informative lecture i think he is my student sir, sir i think it's enough uh, any more question they can uh, mail you before time is running um, we have more than two, more two lectures okay, thank you and uh, i have uh, okay thank you many papers research papers are there you can read all those thank you thanks a lot thank you sir thank you uh, all who are having question just mail sir we will provide you mail id so okay. i am requesting our host Uh, sir you can uh, stop your screen sharing okay thank you sir so i will request our host to take charge and welcome our next host next speaker so now i would like to call our second speaker mr argadeep nath food safety officer department of health and family welfare government of west bengal food safety standard authority of india and he will speak on the topic food packaging so so please take over
Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, hello everybody. Uh, myself, Orghodeep. I will uh, describe you uh, in today's seminar about food packaging. As it is, all you know that it is a vast topic. So, to present it before you, very difficult thing. So, we have a very gist. Uh, packaging uh, PPT for you. I think. Uh, may I start now? Hello. May I start? Yes, sir. Yes, you can start. Okay. So this is the elementary food safety and combat COVID-19 situation training, basically. So we are in the in this uh, online webinar platform. So uh, please be uh, safe and keep your family in safe condition. Follow the guidelines of the uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare of Central and your respective state. Uh, so basically, uh, today's uh, my topic is food packaging. So the definition of food packaging, you all you know because uh, without packaging we can't consume any food for longer time period so food packaging is as enclosement of the food to protect it from tampering and other hazards like biological physical chemical active packaging being the most common packaging system for preserving food uh, in uh, recent days Next, we'll, uh, we know that fundamental goal of food packaging, why, why we uh, uh, pack food. As we are the consumers. Uh, outside impact in our food, meaning environmental impact. Packaging not only protects food from outside, but also damage, uh, provides consumer with information, ingredient, nutrition. Not only its, its duty is to protect food as a wrapper or any content, but also it gives us the details simultaneously. Okay. Next, what is the packaging attributes? So basically what packaging... Uh, Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, Hello, everybody. Hello, sir. Your voice is breaking so much. Hello. Hello. Your voice is not coming properly. What is the problem? Initially, it was okay, na? Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, now it is coming. Now it is. Okay. Yes, sir. Now it is okay. Now okay. okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So, sorry for the interruption. I have got a call in my phone. So, basically, I am using the smartphone. Uh, anyways, uh, the packaging activity we are talking about. So basically, it's a three packaging. 
रिगार्डिंग stop annotation i have i have clicked it uh, now no, it that is no problem uh, audio is the problem sir that is for the scratching purpose uh, now it is i think okay just now it is okay yes sir now it is okay okay so uh, for portion uh, all are able to see the slide properly the text all are able to read it Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, we were in the protection part of the attribute. Uh, so the second uh, point, please, I am going through it by reading it. Packaging of food helps the physical and mechanical shocks uh, as a barrier uh, to food. Then the th third point is the. it chemically it minimizes the changes of composition light oxila, um, oxygen moisture or light which uh, acts as um, agent or catalyst to go through various um, physiochemical reaction you know so it also protects from that the it protects food from biology macro and microbiological uh, agents then it's come about uh, the barrier protection what is barrier protection the primary function of packaging is to keep food clean fresh and safe for the intended shelf life what is intended shelf life suppose uh, i am manufacturing a food and uh, i have trial it uh, as per the um, my needed shelf life and simultaneously i will choose the right uh, packaging material to achieve that intended shelf life uh, so package after a barrier of food from the oxygen water vapor dust from outside agent some packages contain oxygen absorbers also uh, because uh, in some food uh, there is they are much more prone to any uh, microbial contamination because they are very low in moisture content as per their those product uh, some manufacturer use the oxygen absorber because if any kind of oxygen leaching through otr property of any packaging material so the oxygen absorber will minimal the effect of presence of oxygen okay next it is about the containment so basically uh, a packet or any packaging will hold the product uh, from outside so it is basically the point containment uh, as you can see there is a, a picture of uh, bread in a packet and um, the containment is also have a property like uh, we can uh, we can get a portion a particular portion food in a same uh, packet so uh, for example any uh, liquid powder granular material also grouped together in a packet that is also a beauty of containment property then it comes about transmission of information as we all know that uh, central and state government and our fsi also have certain requirements for basic labeling so we also get it from the packaging of uh certain food product and uh for global global use this is also a basic criteria because i need to understand what i am eating 
okay uh, this thing we, i will come later also uh, next we uh, we will focus on marketing uh, beside the basic uh, information regarding the labeling a food packet or any food uh, product um, packaging uh, will advertise or uh, says about the product also what is basically the product is for what is the intended use so uh, manufacturer also get that platform as a marketing tool uh, the packaging they also use it basically they uh, do the very fancy design very uh, graphical representation what uh, what will be catchy to the uh, consumers okay and next it is come the security part so uh, there are many security risk any sabotage any um, any chance of uh, mishandling intentional unintentional so for the security purpose also packaging plays a vital role uh, we all know that that the tamper proof packaging uh, in the picture you can see that uh, <clears throat> hello all uh, i am edible clearly i am asking again hello yes sir you are audible so uh, basically it is a, a picture of um, tamper proof packaging glass packaging basically it is a strawberry pulp so uh, everybody can see that pro, uh, from the lead part towards the body part there is a red uh, tamper proof label uh, which basically ensures that if that label is torn or any smudge is there so it is uh, the consumer must aware that um, or uh, don't don't pick the product as it is a proof of tamper in that packaging so basically the security purpose is solved through this <coughs> tamper proof quality or um, facility of packaging we have okay next the security part the package uh, is designed to reduce the risk of pilferage we know that because uh, for an example suppose uh, i am packing a jam or any jelly type item uh, so if i am not uh, looking upon the sealing part beside my primary packaging as uh, the primary packaging will be the container it can be a glass made container it can be a uh, rigid any uh, rigid semi rigid packaging container of um, plastic uh, but the sealing part must be ensured to uh, reduce the chance of pilferage because if there is any pilferage or leakage uh, my all the uh, packaging will be uh, will be of no no uh, party should be ensured by sealing uh, by uh, putting additional um, uh, additional any uh, paper or paper laminated form which we get in the uh, jam jelly part honey we get it in double honey you will you can also take it so that is basically a very uh, Good um, a, a example of security for pill products. Packages may have authentication seal which indicates that it contains a genuine. So uh, suppose uh, the, here it comes about the trademark or registered uh, trademark for your specific product and uh, it is also a proof of your genuinity. Suppose double trademark genuineize the uh, proof of it is a very authenticate ingredient it contains and it is from dabo for example Achha. next is come the uh, electronic or um, intelligent uh, security system uh, we don't uh, see it in our indian uh, product basically but in uh, um, abroad product you can easily find it uh, it is basically we we all know it is RFID tag, uh, which is basically a electronic device. Uh, there is a sensor, uh, which by a certain tool, uh, like uh, the barcode scanner, uh, is a uh, laser based or any 
specific wavelength based tool where the sensor is activated and we get the details likewise the rfid also works and uh, please go through the uh, lines uh, basically i am not reading it pi to pi i am basically uh, trying to make you realize and understand what is basically the need of this kind of a security code so beside rfid there is a die pack system what is die pack suppose uh, there is a uh, there is certain kind of packaging in which uh, two or three component is present as uh, coating or lamination suppose aluminium on aluminium there is pet pet lamination or inside pet it is a aluminium film lamination so uh, some uh, yeah, um, some food product company use the die pack system it is a specific die given in that particular uh, component which overlaps one on another and if that uh, leaches or uh, if that is uh, the color from color you can understand that the two two tone of those colors suppose there is a two tone material present inside it so from that you can understand that die pack is broken or uh, any problem is there uh, realizing the and understanding the die you can visualize this that suppose red and yellow has been smashed in some area okay now the last part is about the electronic article surveillance tag basically it is also the uh, electronic sensor based tags by a uh, specific tools we can check it about the uh, basically it is um, uh, for specific need it can be used in food so these are all the security tools next we uh, come to the convenience part what is the convenience uh, food packaging gives to us like certain features which include the handling stacking display sale opening reclosing these are all are the need we uh, feel handling need stacking need proper stacking proper displaying sale opening reclosing um, like a jam jam container so it is a it must have a need of reclosing using reusing reclosing so this is the convenience which we get from packaging packaging in oven safe oven tray a uh, uh, oven tray doesn't melt or doesn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, got its shape uh, change during uh, heat treatment so it is a convenience of packaging like boil in bag uh, the boil in bag features is like that the bag is uh, boiled in water and it decomposes it contains bio degradable material and which is uh, food grade also so um, that is uh, one type microwave steam bag this type uh, kind of bag uh, basically like we use the microwave proof container so this is also a bag where you can uh, put inside the your desired food vegetables and it will be steamed as per your choice boiled or steam or even cook okay so this is the convenience part next we come the portion control what is portion control portion control is suppose i am purchasing a 500 ml uh, pouch of milk so it is a it comes under a sku of 500 ml it has sku of 1 liter sku of 200 ml in milk industry so this is a choice of portion control okay so and uh, for this choice we can choose our inventory also suppose you need a 1 liter milk for two days okay so you can choose five pack of 200 ml you can choose two pack of 500 ml you can choose one liter pack alone so you have choice of portion control as per your inventory need okay next we come the material used in food packaging what are the materials basically used 
these are glass metal and plastics okay and uh, this is a major part uh, we have paper also we will discuss it first of all we are uh, giving our uh, focus on the traditional glass so glass is traditional food packaging material it is inert and odorless we all know and this uh, this fluid is getting blurred okay it is right the advantage of glass is what because it is very it gives us a impermeability uh, what does it mean because it is a 100% uh, defend to the oxygen water and other dust vapor uh, outside things what is the advantage of glass material it is inert it it will have no physiochemical changes with the food with the packaging material the glass can be of various shapes as it is a rigid material and it is a good insulated material also your uh, desired object will be uh, will give you your certain desired temperature for a very large part of time rather than using other material so these are the good things about glass and you can see or observe your food from outside because it is transparent and what are the disadvantages the transportation of glass is heavy because a single unit of glass packaging is Five to ten times heavy, even higher, ten to uh, five to ten times heavy than a similar packaging of such food, and uh, the breakage due to internal pressure impact of thermal shock. Suppose uh, inside uh, glass also get some uh, heavy load of uh, yeah, transportation of glass packaging food item. There will be the transportation shock there may be some local thermal shock that can side and due to this glass is a brittle material so it can also rupture or break okay next it is come the metal the metal is very acceptable and adaptable packaging material to all of us because it is a very it gives us basically very strength to the packaging and the most common metal packaging we all know it is aluminium so what is uh, aluminium uh, in uh, food packaging as a metal used used commonly to make cans foil laminated paper plastic packaging as laminated uh, lamination mainly used for light packing soft drink can pet food and seafood and what is aluminium foil used this is available in wide range of thickness thin aluminium foil are used to wrap food we all know for roti and chapati we used to get it from restaurants and thicker ones are used for tray uh, we all know that also aluminium packaging the thicker uh, yeah, uh, version is also uh, used as a container temporary container which we also get from restaurants and uh, take away counters okay and the next thing is laminated metallized film what is laminated and metallized film binding of aluminium foil or paper to a plastic film basically it is a laminate in industry in bakery industry we all know laminate rolls come and it is uh, hugely used for packaging of various biscuits cakes so that is the laminates and metallized film lamination to plastic enable heat sealing ability however the seal doesn't completely bar moisture and air majorly used in dried soup we all know it okay and in soups and herbs and spices this packaging is comparatively expensive okay and next it is the what is the advantage of metal okay the advantage of metal is aluminum provides excellent barrier to moisture air and other microorganism aluminum has very good flexibility and surface resilience what is surface uh, surface resilience surface resilience basically it is a flexible kind of material so the shock it gets from any surface or outside it get it uh, it adjusted inside with the food material okay 
so it has a very good formability outstanding embossing potential we we'll, we all know the uh, quality of material or the component of aluminium is very soft in nature so embossing is very good option or choice for aluminium sheet or any container and it can be recycled also very uh, as it is a metal so it can be recycled and next it comes the plastics so uh, majorly i am i feel that 60 to 65% of packaging industry is depends on plastic so it is a extensively used packaging material the thermoplastics can easily be molded in products such as bottle jar plastic films thermoplastic can be melted and reused as raw material for production of new product as they are recyclable the um, advantages now we will look on the advantages part plastics are flexible in design it is uh, in melted condition it is fluid and it is moldable plastics are inexpensive and light in weight why plastic is inexpensive because plastic is a by product of petroleum industry so we don't uh, we don't have to uh, manufacture it separately so the, that's why plastic is uh, so much uh, inexpensive and it is it can be recycled also we all know the plastics are chemically resistant have a wide range of physical optical property many plastics are heat sealable easy to print that is a very good point that plastic is very easy to print next what is the disadvantage plastics have variable permeability to light plastic have various porosity and various grain dependent on various grain various quality plastic is uh, of various porosity in nature that's why it is permeability varies for light gas vapors low molecular weight molecules uh, okay and next it's come the plastic material used in packaging basically there are three uh, three different segment of plastic which we use in food packaging first one is ldp uh, means low density polyethylene next one hdp high density and next one is polyethylene tetraethylate or polyester or pet pet bottle so every uh, variety have its own uh, application and own advantages like for ldp the it is tough and flexible easily form lightweight excellent water vapor barrier application where it is used basically for the exterior and interior coating on milk packs oil packs laminate on aseptic block carton heat sealing coating on many cheese pouches basically it is a very flexible and the plastic packets we generally call it it is basically of ldp next one is hdp what is hdp it is semi rigid it is not so much flexible it is translucent it has no no opacity uh, uh, sorry it is uh, basically translucent or opaque it has no transparency and it is a very good resistance of heat rather than ldp excellent moisture water resistance application where it is used for the form bottle of milk and drinkable yogurt the uh, the opaque plastic bottles which we observe in various liquid milk product that is basically hdp and what is poly oxygen water basically it bottle we used to see it in various carbonated beverages various dairy uh, milk shakes that is made pet okay and the thermoform tops and tubs the crates the tubs it is basically made of pet now it comes the paper paper also is a very good choice of packaging so um, paper has various variety also like craft paper sulfide paper grease proof paper glassine parchment paper okay so these have basically various different use depending upon the use of paper these things are being made 
the craft paper is used for the sugar dried fruit vegetables sulfide paper for small bags of biscuits and confectionery grease proof paper like for cookies candy bar any other oily food glycine used for biscuit lining cookie fat fast food baking baked good parchment paper for butter and lard inside the amul uh, 100 gram 200 gram paper packaging inside it you will find a white and blue combination paper that is basically parchment paper or we in commercially we also call it butter paper that is basically parchment paper the paper board we all know it is a multiple layer of paper and using a basic uh, fluting technology it is made it gives us a tertiary packaging or you can say secondary basically tertiary packaging component it is used for holding purposes of the uh, primary packaging and the paper laminates it is a laminated type of paper nowadays uh, we all see that matte finish or laminated paper pouches are coming for holding food products dry fruit products herbs spices or any nuts type of product you can see also in the um, picture it is a uh, coffee beans uh, packed in the paper laminate form uh, okay so these are the various packaging option now it comes the types of food packaging uh, look into the table container type suppose is a uh, aseptic packaging aseptic processing in a uh, no um, uh, septic uh, condition will um, occur it is a aseptic processing type of container it will be primary container like liquid whole egg liquid whole egg is very perishable product so it is it needs a aseptic processing condition and uh, this needs the primary packaging as container okay likewise the other options are there for tray suppose this is a tray tray is a primary packaging for fish portioning we all know fish is portioned in trays and bags like potato chips okay potato chips comes into plastic bags next the boxes box of complex carton like kellogs bagries we know that it is a secondary packaging in primary packaging what we get inside it it is a aluminium foil packaging and the secondary one is the box package okay so please go through the slide you will understand that what is the different difference packaging we uh, use in our daily life uh okay so pallets and wrappers i will make you understand pallets are basically used in the uh, warehouse industry where the various boxes the tertiary package containers are made uh, is basically rigid and also made of wood but in industry wood is not uh, allowed because of the mites issue so this is tertiary packaging it is a supporting packaging pallets and wrappers what is wrapper in shipping when containers comes so uh, in the tertiary packaging like it is a carton packaging and outside it, it is a lamination and that is the wrapper okay it is a plastic thin film that is basically wrapping it is also a tertiary package types of food packaging what are the primary secondary tertiary packaging main package that holds the food that is primary combined primary package into box that is secondary and tertiary combines all the secondary box packed 
into one pallet that is a tertiary package and the, what are the modern trends in food packaging it is a bioplastic and barcode we all know bioplastic because uh, i uh, want to share an example like um, one and a half year ago or two year ago there was a initiative in all our airports in metropolitan cities like kolkata chennai mumbai delhi there was uh, a stop use of plastic and there came the bioplastic in the food packaging uh, sectors of airport they used to give uh, their customers the bioplastics uh, material because it is basically a, a normal plastic material coated with cellulose or starch so that uh, that give you support to being exposed to the raw plastic component rather than you get the final coating of starch and cellulose which is which is very suitable to your body uh, the use of plastic usually non biodegradable packaging and because when we give the certain uh, ratio in cellulose starch in the plastic that is that gives you some uh, strength to decompose and it is uh it is treated as biodegradable then what is barcode the use of barcode we all know it is a specific code under a barcode scanner it it can be uh it can be read out in the computer system and there is basically the date coding and the product uh product details we get it and we can check it very easily through the barcode scanner so it also helps to track the product throughout the distribution process future trends in food packaging what are the future trends uh, edible packaging micro packaging and anti microbial packaging so basically what is uh, edible packaging uh, the packaging itself is a uh, act as a food so while consuming the food you can also eat the packet also like the edible rice paper wrap candy available in japan in the picture you can see the french fries comes in a container made of potato peel okay so these are the is the nice example of edible packaging and uh, in coming days we will also um, get this kind of packaging in our daily life the microfilm it is a what what is microfilm packaging it is thousand times thinner than a human hair that has been invented to uh, as a packaging material it is eco friendly than plastic it has preservation quality of glass like it is a, a special design micro packaging it will when you will touch the micro packaging container you will feel that you are touching the food itself but it is a thin packaging over there that is very much degradable and that is also gives you the quality and property of glass packaging simultaneously okay next it is come the antimicrobial packaging basically antimicrobial packaging there is some antimicrobial component being used in the packaging like silver uh, particle we we'll all know it is a antimicrobial effect so um, it is a coat given in the basically the perishable food like uh, meat product uh, semi processed meat uh, it is being used and it gives the uh beside the aseptic packaging condition it also as a packaging uh, it also gives you the support to uh, longer the shelf life because it has some component like silver uh, silver ion coating silver particle coating act as a antimicrobial packaging <coughs> uh the in this uh, labeling requirement as per fssai for the food packaging in Uh, previous slide i mentioned the labeling requirement as transformation of information which is a attribute of packaging so uh, now it is the question about the labeling requirement as per fsci so the labeling requirement is very much needed for fsci uh, as per our uh, indian standard guideline that is the uh, 12 things we need to uh, understand Uh, the name of food should be there 
list of ingredients should be there nutritional information should be there and the declaration regarding veg and non veg should be there declaration regarding food additives what is food additive any colorant any uh, flavor you are using and please go to the food packaging guideline which is uh, you can uh, it is available on our website in details you can get it what is the packaging requirement guideline by fasai uh, and next it is the declaration regarding food additive next the name and complete address of the manufacturer net quantity lot or batch code date of manufacture of packing base before or use by date country of origin for imported food like i am importing a food from japan and i need to uh, as a indian uh, when i will check it uh, in dock or any shipping area so there is a need of the, that that food should contain the uh, specific of origin of those that certain country like it is made of japan okay next the instruction for use the instruction should be present there how to use the food uh, in the picture there is a uh, basically it is shown that what are the basic uh, requirement uh, we need to fulfill uh, you can see it also and now uh, it is the end of our session now it comes about the question part as per our uh, webinar criteria i have given some question on the packaging uh, today's topic so please go through it and prepare yourself to uh, it will help you to uh, give you more confidence about today's uh, overall session so uh, thank you very much for watching the tutorial seminar and hope you will uh, you have learned uh, the and you have just uh, you have just remember uh, what you have learned in your uh, college semester also and this is the basic things beside this when you are in the industry you will come to know that uh, the more you uh, go more you are in the experience of industry as a quality or product uh, production person you will have certain choices uh, any kind of r and d you you have some uh, opportunity as a r and d person also so that will be a, a very uh, detailed sharing uh, very detailed uh, experience about the packaging and various things there are something like frozen food some uh, suppose you are in frozen food segment so the frozen food need to be kept in a certain condition as per fasai also uh, so beside packaging that things the conditions about how a packaging should work that is also a vital thing so we all need to uh, keep on those things also okay so basically we have closed our uh seminar hello uh thank you sir uh, for the presentation sir uh, some questions are there in chat box yes i have i have opened the chat box right now uh there are some questions because it is is it from the previous lecture also some questions or it is a fresh questions because Sir, these all are for questions for you. Uh, previous questions are gone. These all okay. questions for you. Okay. So, um, thank you very much. Excellent detailed presentation, sir. Thank you. How do you control now? It is it is also previous. That is also present. Okay. Um, as glass is non reactive and also have other advantages then why glass is not the most used packaging material uh, mr devkan dalal has a question why glass is not used uh, whereas glass has a 
certain uh, property as a packaging material which is based among its class okay so basically glass packaging is basically it gets its uh, uh, what i can say it is uh, it it loses its quality because of its weight and its brittle property that is the basic drawback regarding glass packaging still nowadays as we are uh, we are trying to uh, get back our old packaging uh, techniques and moreover you can say the natural packaging technique nowadays we are uh, we are using glass bottles as drinking purpose also for daily uh, daily life so uh glass packaging depends because as a as a own choice as my own choice or as your own choice you can use a glass packaging for reusable packaging material like you are uh, consuming food in glass plate you are drinking uh, water in glass uh, bottles or glass um, yeah, containers but for when it comes uh, the question about the industrial use so uh, these things are the drawbacks which we um, majorly we try to um, overcome it to the, our choice with other packaging material but still there are some uh, material which is we uh, used to get it in glass packaging like jam jelly sauce the liquid material which are more prone to uh chemical physiochemical changes there we um, still now we get the uh, choice of glass packaging for pickles also we get it and besides glass packaging there is also a problem glass container is comparatively higher in price uh, with the other choice okay so basically this is the main uh, problem regarding glass packaging okay next what is the question how we decide the label size and the size of alphabet numeric value it is uh, value so kirti kiran it is a very good question i have i uh, initially the while the starting the seminar i told that the the detailed discussion i can't go you can get it in the uh, packaging regulation of fasci and it is clearly mentioned that the devnagari uh, or the uh, english language you can use as per your printing window you can choose the millimeter size of that uh, printing uh, uh, printing size of certain packaging material okay so you need to go through it it is just a data you don't have to re uh, remember it you can get it and you can print it and you can keep it in, in your diary uh, during your inspection or any uh, receive material checking okay in industry okay next is information related to allergen for labeling requirement uh, till date uh, fasci have a uh, option of allergen declaration for uh, allergenic food as we know that there are eight allergens mm, but uh, information related to allergen for labeling requirement is mandatory or optional no it is mandatory have uh, suppose uh, see you are uh, you are preparing a product soybean okay soya chunks nutrella fortune those companies are in the uh, in the segment so they uh, they need to declare if there is any miss in the declaration that is a uh, labeling violation problem so it is not optional it is mandatory and i can also uh, there is a new change in the prepared food segment also regarding allergen but that is not a uh, uh, mandatory um, compliance regarding the prepared food allergen segment suppose in airport there is a buffet or any uh, any big uh, big lounge also there is a display of prepared food there they can make the choice that uh, this food contains allergen but this food contains soybean or nuts or milk or egg and 
this and uh, this food contains egg and it is basically an allergenic item allergen okay that you can also give that is optional that is not mandated but for processed food it is mandated okay as glass is non reactive but it comes reactive at high temperature so what do we uh, what we do in that condition so in that condition where the glass is uh, reactive we have a choice of aseptic drum okay aseptic drum is basically a stainless steel container and it is uh, it is over uh, coated with the uh, pvc uh, coating is also present there so it gives a very good uh, thermal shock strength and thermal uh, reactive strength because ss is very much uh, non reactive with uh, food temperature because high uh, temperature food is basically uh, what much it is below boiling so that also we stand by aseptic drum okay but uh, for a uh, glass it is not always reactive at high temperature it depends about the quality of glass so um, basically glass is also known as the high reactive withstand temperature property so it is it depends okay because sometimes glass glass breaks in high temperature that is also uh, the question of its thickness and quality Thank you, sir, for the wonderful, uh, nice and knowledge presentation. Thanks. What's the remedy to avoid pollution of plastic film (LDP) in case of dairy industry, as polyfilm glass plate are costlier? So, uh, uh, in the milk and uh, oil industry, we uh, flexible packaging LDP is majorly used. They are also now coming with uh, total recyclable packaging. Uh, they are also giving that thing also in the packaging because basically they are giving some kind of uh, coating uh, of edible packaging material like starch or cellulose or any uh, any gum gum coating guar gum xanthan gum or any basic uh, food grade additive coating so that is uh, they are doing it uh, not all company but the and big houses are doing it so for ldp packaging to avoid pollution from plastic you need to convert it slowly in bio biodegradable plastic packaging okay you need to uh, you need to discuss it to, uh, to your vendor and your uh, technical uh, plant manager uh, quality manager production manager okay so can you please repeat about pellet tertiary tertiary packaging and pellet is basically a uh, do, do the purpose of uh, to, uh, to hold the lot okay suppose it is a biscuit it is a mary, mary biscuit uh, con uh, packaging box the primary packaging is laminate secondary packaging is a carton and the tertiary packaging is wrap suppose in a carton there is 24 uh, packet of 200 gram mary biscuit the uh, pellet will contain suppose a stack height of 6 6 by 4 total pellet size so 24 carton uh, above 24 carton there is a flexible wrapping and total wrap 24 carton will contain in a pellet okay So this is the main function of a pellet it holds the lot <clears throat> in the expiry date of a bread packet is crossed then up to how many days it can still be consumed does it cause any harm best before and expiry is different thing nowadays you will not find expiry date or expire month year of any food packet in general in in india get used by date so best before and used by is basically the timeline up to which a product uh, can hold its uh, texture flavor uh, palatability mouth feel each and every 
compo uh, quality okay so basically that is a base before but uh, its moisture loss suppose you are having a cake it is a base before of 3 months from date of manufacture after 3 months what will happen the cake will lose its moisture in some percentage so when you will have that cake you will uh, you will find it that is enough dry to consume but after base before some bacteriological mic that also raises high for product to product it varies and it loses its color appearance also in some product in some product it goes soggy depending upon the packaging material it otr oxygen transmission rate for water transmission rate property so basically these are the issues regarding base before and uh, used by date okay so the bread packet if it is crossed it is the bread is basically a perishable material it contains high moisture so it is a chance of mold growth okay so uh, any pathogenic any fungal growth you will find so it is um, it is suggested that don't consume after the bread uh, date is over uh, there is a um, discussion in fasci as i am in a fasci i know it uh, this kind of suppose uh, i have purchased a bread today is 8 i have purchased purchased on 6 okay and it is written that two days uh, used by date so basically today it will be uh, uh, it will not of that much use after 12 am because it will be 9 from 12 am so after 9 what what i will do as a sincere customer some of us will uh, discard in industry some of us will keep it refrigerate and reheat in baking oven or micro oven or toaster and will consume it but there is a confusion so what what we should do not to do so this kind of packaging when it is kept in shops i have not picked it up and it is expired what will the shop owner do it will it will be subsidized rate and it will be sold and there there should be some guideline regarding its selling uh, up to 4 hour 6 hour of certain date which it has it was it best before and suppose on 9 it is still in the shop and they will uh, sell it uh, declaring that you will have to consume by 6 hour okay so as we are a very uh, poor country right now uh, considering our overall uh, general uh, overall population uh, so these are the uh, technical things are coming from fasci that we will have our food security also besides food safety and everyone should get their feet properly oh, okay uh, sir uh, okay sir thank you sir uh, i think this is enough question and sir if others yes, are having uh, questions sir they will yes. mail you yes sir so please give the total mail id yes sir i will provide your mail id to them okay and specific specific about your question what you don't get in uh, over internet or any standard law book or in your uh, quality manual production manual in your industry uh, jab, uh, you you should have a question you should have a doubt but please try to uh, reply it from your own from your resources okay that will i will i will give you the size thank you so much sir thank you anything else any questions uh, no sir i think they they will mail you if they have any doubts okay okay, okay, okay thank, sir, you. thank you so i am closing thank okay, you so much for the support thank you so i am requesting our host to welcome our next speaker thank you sir now i would like to call our third speaker mr swapnil bhartwaj quality control manager food division itc limited 
and he will speak on the topic HACCP HACCP, TACCP TACCP and VACCP VACCP. So please sir, take a turn. Hello everyone. Good evening. Good evening sir. My screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, let's start about the hazards, HACCP, TACCP, and VASAP. These are the most critical things in food industry nowadays. As we know, as a food safety management system, there are three pillars. First is HACCP which is prevention of unintentional accidental adulteration or food-borne illness to our food. It is the main motive of food, this principle to preserve our food and save food. We have to provide safe food to market to consume anyone. Second is TASEP. TASEP is similar. This is the threat. It is, it is a food defense. If our, my product get contaminated by any intentional or unintentional means of sources. And VASAP is basically the economical motivated contamination or hazard. Just like if I want to in normal language, I am saying that I have to give 80 grams of biscuit in a packet. And I am economically by saving, I am giving 75 grams. So it is economically motivated. So let's just start with the hazard. What is a hazard? When we listen the hazard, something like uh, anything uh, make uncomfortable to us, which is dangerous to ourselves is a hazard. Today, now we are going to explain what are the hazards and what are the risks. So, if we start, water is a hazard, but it is not hazard till without we jump into water without knowing the swimming. If I know the swimming, then water is not hazard for me. Water is hazard, but it is not hazardous in general. If I am not jump into the water and I am not you know, swimming. Second, similarly, petrol is a hazard. But it is still not, it is a hazard till it gets light a matchbox. Near, if we light a match uh, extended away from the gasoline, it is not a hazard. But if we light a match nearby a gasoline, it will be a hazard. And the, so similarly driving. Driving is a hazard. But risk, risk if I use my phone while driving, there is a risk. So in following slides, we will understand what is the hazard and what is the risk. If there is a hazard, it is okay, but if there is a severity and probability of happening the exposure of, exposure of the thing is called hazard. So let's know about the HACCP. HACCP is the Hazard analysis critical control point and HACCP hazard analysis is a systematic approach to the identification and assessment of risk and severity and control of biological, chemical, physical hazard associated with a particular food production process or practices. So we, if we forget the hazard in the categories, there are four types of hazard. First, biological chemical, physical, and allergen. Now allergens is also added as a hazard. So if we buy for, uh, see the, in detail, physical hazard, what is the physical hazard? Anything enters in physically like wood, uh, wood, uh, paper, pin, uh, garments, button, hair, all are physically, ha physical hazard. It's basically come through people, premises, product, packaging, or plant. From people like hair nets, the 
people employees or worker wear watches jewelry they are wearing gloves which is plastic gloves apron reading glasses uh, and uh, buttons hair uniform thread so that's why we are in food industry we are not allowing there is a jewelry policy to do not wear any kind of jewelry inside the factory premises even any earrings nail polish is also not allowed in the food factory similarly premises premises if there is a painting painting like there is a chipping in painting it could be a physical hazard if the paints fall in our product it will be a hazard laminates a stone if my food practice premises is not intact close there is a gaps or something is dropping from yeah, top or is from wall it will be, could be a hazard similarly product if my product is uh, an animal based there should be a chances of animal hair skin pits feather or any other thing which come from the products it also comes from the packaging part which could be a hard plastic papers metal cans ribbon rubber soft plastic cardboard anything and the another one main sources of in plant is the machine so we are using in food industry food grade piece only this because it is a hazard if you are using any other piece it could be enter in the product it will Could be a major hazard. So we are using only food grade piece. All the materials like plastic, carrots, utensils, everything should be must be food grade quality. Even storage tanks is also should be food grade quality. The conveyor belts, glass, glass should be must be covered by the layers of. It should be not. broken nuts and screw everywhere whatever is in the line machinery it should be tied up and it should be not loose to transfer any nuts or bolts into the food it should be a major hazard if we are categorize some parameters like glass sources are bottles jar light fixtures so every light fixture should be covered by the nowadays we are covering from the pp polycarbonate and utensil some in industries which uses the glass utensil it could be broken and enter in the food foods uh, in plants some are using food uh, pallets made of woods it could be a hazard so we are recommending all to use plastic pallets not not wood pallets stones bullet needles jewelry jewelry already i have told that there is a jewelry policy in most of the plant and it is the compulsory in food premises to there should be a jewelry policy to avoid any type of the contamination next is metal metal may be comes to the machinery machinery equipments nut bolts or anything wires or any other source so there should be a ccp this is critical control point we will discuss later in upcoming slides insect or anything there should be a pest control program these are the part of prp prerequisite program by which we cover all these things then similarly like blue bone plastic and others if we comes in chemical hazard it could be categorized in natural occurring added contaminants and from packaging materials in natural occurring there should be like allergen which is the most common like food milk soya food sea foods etc these are the basic list which can be categorized as a chemical hazard it's i can explain agriculture chemical if we are using any pesticides it could be a hazard lubricants 
sanitizer we are using for cleaning equipment it could be a chemical hazard it contaminates the food products paints refrigerant food additive lead adhesive glues printing coat inks uh, the cleaners coating and uh, others even pest control is a major food safety hazard as a chemical hazard mostly pesticides used in the food premises can be a hazard so there is a must be a policy of pest storage of pest control and their limited use and their record maintaining to control this kind of hazard if any pest control chemical enters accidentally enters in our food product it could be a major hazard and leads to the death even of the person really biological hazards like bacteria spore forming clostridium bacillus cereus bacteria which are not spore for forming viruses nowadays corona is also a group but now as per who there is no evidence of spreading of corona by food so it is now we can say now it is safe major bacteria are listeria salmonella shigella eosorias streptococcus vibrio cholera these are the major bacteria which are considered as a hazard so if we see the what are the things to control the biological hazards the control all the biological hazards just there there are some things we need to grow any microorganism in food we can define is a phatom f a t t o m if any microorganism present in the food so it new need foods for their growth food is already there because it's a food product so they can grow acidity for growing any bacteria there is a requirement of optimum ph any bacteria only grow in the certain ph range if the product acidity of product is higher or lower then the any bacteria cannot grow on that ph and they are not survive similarly temperature temperature is required to grow there is a optimum temperature to grow a microorganism is 5 to 60 degree so that's why we are storing in foods for longer time in refrigerator below 5 degree or the at higher temperature above 60 degree the range of 5 degree to 60 degree is most commonly known as the danger zone to growth of microorganism in food next is time any microorganism needs sufficient time to grow when exposed to the danger zone if any product exposed only for 5 to 10 minutes it will not there is very less chance to grow in that proportion so time is also a important factor to grow any microorganism in food oxygen oxygen is required to grow any microorganism in food so that's why the most of chips at the food Uh, packets are filled with nitrogen nitrogen in inert gas so any microorganism cannot grow due to the absence of oxygen so that's why they are filling nitrogen and most of uh, my labs are testing the oxygen percentage in the pack filling pack packaged foods next is moisture moisture is an important factor to grow any microorganism in food if we are considering it is a the water activity so food factory normally checks water activity of any product to know about the prior probability of growing any microorganism it's then 0 to 1 if the water activity of any product is higher there is like 0.7 0.9 there is a higher probability to growth of microorganism if the water activity of any product is less than 0.4 0.3 there is very less chances of growing of any microorganism that's why the more sugar products like chocolates sugar candy sugar and uh, many other products there are very less chance of growing microorganism it also works as a preservative
next hazards allergens nowadays allergen is the most common hazard most of countries allergen declaration is mandatory in food packets so if we, we are manufacturing any product which is allergen free and but it is manufacturing in the same premises we must have to declare the contamination of allergen as may be the proportion it is the mandatory rule for example if we are making any coffee or chocolates with milk and milk with milk or almond nowadays many chocolates are coming with the tree nuts tree nuts almond hazelnut and and in second line if we are manufacturing any same chocolate without any when nuts or in nuts like tree almond hazelnut etc so if still we have to declare there should be on the packet that there should be a chances of contamination of allergen if we are not declaring there should be an allergen management program to control allergen from one line to another for allergen management we must have to use separate utensils separate line separate manufacturing area even person cannot move from one to another without any physical barrier or dress changing or any other precaution because there is a high chance of allergen contamination from one product to another so it is wise to we must have to declare on label that it may contain below allergen because manufacturing in the same plant so as of now there are eight common allergens are there like milk peanuts egg tree nut soya fish or wheat selfish any food can contain one or more than one allergen but we must have to declare it if we still we have to declare if it is in lower quantity or as a as minor ingredient we have to declare about their details so let's come about the history of hasep year 1959 pillsbury developed hasep system to meet requirements of nasa space program modes of failure concept of us army natic lab was the basis year 1969 codex alimentarius join who fao body published guideline for hasep year 1985 sub committee of national advisory committee developed report based on hasep year 1989 national advisory committee on microbiology criteria of food established guideline for hasep year 1992 nsc mcf red drafted the guideline based on codex so let's come about the principle of hasep there are seven principle of hasep initially we have to listing the all hazards and critical control point second identification of ccp third establishment of critical limits for development of monitoring procedures five corrective action six verification seven documentation this is basically motive of this hazard is to remove the any hazard which may conclude as a risk into our manufacturing process by the our control measures like prp prerequisite program which are pest control lighting cleaning sensitization etc or if other is oprp by operational prerequisite program and by that thing which are not covered in both of two it should be controlled as a critical control point or hazard so there is total help step of hazard and seven principle so if we are going to do hazard of any plant or any production line the first thing we have to do assemble a hazard team hazard team must conclude all the man team like maintenance manufacturing quality and etc uh, other so it should be not a single person job to create and do hazard it should be a conclusion and a team work 
there should be a person from each category or each department to give their input it will be better to include a HACCP and every the qualification should be mentioned the minimum qualification experience should be required to do the and part of the HACCP team the, it will be valuable to give their well, knowledge and input second step is to describe the product we have to describe the product what we are manufacturing for example just we are manufacturing a chocolate so we have to describe what we are manufacturing what who are the target consumers and everything what are the brand every details of the product should be described and every process third is identify the intended use we have to identify the intended use like wedge or where the selling market for india or the any certain countries it should be and every thing should be identified for its use next step is construct a flow diagram for any hazard or hazard analysis we have to first draw the process flow diagram so we have to start from the start of the factory like receiving of the rm to a dispatch of the finished product we have to consider all the program like raw material if from any raw material is coming what are the chances of hazard in this there should be a physical chemical or biological hazard in the raw material like smp uh, skim mill powder is coming there should be a physical hazard like there should be a thread there should be a anything metal piece there should be any other paper in the bags there should be a chances of these things so what are our control measure to control these things if we are getting anything like paper wood physical hazards so how do we control these hazards and identify the product which is not suitable for us so there should be a sampling norms and other similarly the if there should be a biological hazard or chemical hazard how do we identify that this hazard is present in the defined consignment so there should be a sampling norms so how much bags we will sample to release any specific batch if we are getting a hundred bags of skim milk powder how many bags should be checked how what is the sampling frequency location it will be not in a sequence there should be a sampling plan how much sampling quantity should be it should everything should be defined that what is the sampling plan how much sample we have to do from where and which step we have to do for microbiological we have to do a specific and different kind of sampling in sterile containers so there should be a checks for simply simply if where any vehicle comes with smp bags or sugar bags anything there we there should be a vehicle inspection check, checklist so check the vehicle if might be product is okay but it is coming in the part load there should be a might be a engine oil loaded with the smp so there should be a chance of contamination of oil spillage into the product or there should be a if a dirty container if a temperature control required for any product like coke butter or cocoa mass it need a specific temp storage temperature in transportation but uh, might be due to the uh, in, unintentionally or intentionally driver stop the ac you are not running the ac to save fuel or anything so they have we have must have to check these things it should be clean there should be no leakage damages vehicle checklist must be there to, before unloading any raw material in the plant after after receiving any raw material it should be there should be a plan of sampling there should be something to storage norms where to it should be stored because as a milk for milk, milk is an allergen so we have to define place for the allergen and it should be stored in that manner only.
after storing, sampling, releasing, technical checks, if there's a required material, raw material is as per our specification or not. We have to check each and every release parameter. Then only we have to use the any raw RM. Till it, we have to even define these things. What are the defined time for checking? What are the parameter we will check? What are the storage location and quarantine till the product or raw material consignment is released for use? And if it is rejected, where it has to be stored? There should be a rejection location defined in the plant, which is away from the RM storage to store rejected, rejected raw material or anything. So after flow, if we draw the flow diagram of each and every process steps, it should be verified by the assembled SF team and team leader. They will verify each part that is anything missing there, everything is covered or not, is any modification or updation required. So the fifth part is on-site confirmation of flow diagram. If I make any flow diagram in, but some if some process step or if there is a minor step is missing, and that can be a hazard. So it should be we have to eliminate all the minor and major steps we are during the construction of flow diagram. After the construction and confirmation of flow diagram, we have to list the hazards related to all the things in the process like rm unloading what are the hazards what are the physical hazards like paper wood uh, plastic these are the physical hazards what are our control measures like we are doing quality checks if temperature there should be it be hazard that there should be a temperature checks but biological hazard there is a microbiological quality checks so there should be a PRP. Every hazard should be considered covered by PRP, prerequisite program, OPRP, operational prerequisite program, or if it is not covered in both of the two, it should be covered by CCP. CCP is critical control point. We have to define the limits. If anything like uh, metal detector and vibrosive, if our FG final product is going to for final packaging. So it should be filtered by any 40 mesh, 30 mesh, or whatever we have validated. So it should be filtered through the CC, through the mesh. And how do we, it is the control measure. So how we will assure the filter is okay or not? There should be a method of measurement of the mesh size. There should be a, a checks of Filter is not da damaged. Filter is in filter is in good condition. If it is not working, working there should be a hole, damage, or anything. There is a chance of contamination, and the product con control is not working. Similarly, if we determine the critical control points, establish the critical limits. What should be the critical limit, and what is the frequency of monitoring the limits? For example, there should be a metal detector in the plant for before after before dispatch of the material, every package, individual pack should transfer through the metal detector. Metal detector is the re control and re rejection mechanism. If we, any product is come in inside the metal detector and it is containing any metal part or accidentally if any metal piece is inside that there. So it will reject that the specified consignment in the rejection location and it should be re-verified and re-investigate from where it is come. That is the another part, it should be a kappa for it. Then what is the source of that metal to be able to investigate? and that metal detector for we have to verify the metal detector is working or not this is the also the part of the monitoring system of control point because in for this example 
our metal detector is the critical control point for it is eliminating the hazard it is rejecting the uh, every individual piece which is containing metal so it is rejecting that part so we have to verify the monitoring system of critical control point so what will be the monitoring of metal detector for example for metal detector we are using fe non fe and ss three or four types of 1.2 mm 0.8 1.8 8 mm fe non fe and ss particles it is the validation to particle validation parts which is used to validate on daily basis so daily we have to check the metal detector is it working properly or not it is detecting all our standards or not if our ccp metal detector is not working we have the mitigation plan for it we will cannot run the product on the line so there should be now we have determined the critical point control point that is metal detector establish the critical limit for ccp it should be what is the critical limit it should be reject 1.8 mm as per validation for example 1.8 mm ss it should be rejected by our metal detector so we have defined the critical limit there should be a monitoring system of our critical ccp is working or not and if our system is not working we have to establish the corrective action whatever we have to do for corrective action for everything if it is not working properly if it is not rejecting then what other things we have to do and for those parameters also with individual bars or packets it is rejected by metal detector what other action we have to take for that and the end we have to establish the document and record keeping to know what are the control measures what are our monitoring and what we have monitored and our everything and what are the kappa we have taken so if we are accessing the hazard uh, we are coming on the first principle the hazard which we are taking as a on the probability and likelihood if uh, there is a probability is low likelihood is high there should be a low chances is low it is you can see here in if the if the both are high then the it should be a hazard it if the probability is high risk severity is low still there will it will be not a part of ccp but is in any process step there is a no control measure probability is also high and severity is also high then it should be controlled by the ccp and if for example lighting is low in any area it is not that much severe and there should be a chance of one light is not working so it is not as high risk so it should be covered by the gm in such way we have decided the scoring and numbering system to decide the probability into severity get the higher number but whatever the number get higher it should be controlled or justified by the oprt or ccp second what we have decided a uh, discuss control points a step where control can be applied to prevent or eliminate or reduce a food safety hazard to acceptable level just like will filtration unit we can reduce to the hazard to the acceptable level what are control measure any activity that can be used to prevent eliminate or reduce to an acceptable level of food safety hazard next critical control point step at which control can be applied and is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level that is the second principle and the most important thing how we will decide it is a ccp so there is a decision tree you can see by this we can decide 
that it should be a CCP, OPRP, or ERP. If any control measure in the in place of hazard, for example, any hazard that we have described, we can put select any single hazard and discuss as uh, this decision tree. If it is the decision tree, it comes at CCP, it should be CCP, or it which is, for example, you can see, are the control measure in place? If yes, does the process step eliminate to reduce the hazard to an acceptable level? If it is yes, then it is CCP, or no. For example, this, you can see, or go through this decision tree, it will be helpful for decide any parameters or process to it is a ccp prp or oprp fourth we have now decided the hazard to as control by prp oprp and ccp then we have to establish target levels and tolerance which must be made to ensure each ccp is under control Specify the criteria which must be met to ensure that each hazard which makes a process step a CCP is in control. Example, hazing temp temperature and time, double seeming effectiveness, etc. Establish monitoring system to ensure of the CCP by scheduled testing or observation. This is an important part that how do we Establish monitoring system who will monitor how it is being monitored. This is the five point what should be monitored, when should be monitored, where should it should be monitored, and how it should be monitored, and who will be monitored. So, if we come to the same example, metal detector, this is a part what is monitored, then the answer is effectiveness of rejecting metal detector should be monitored. Next point, when it is monitored, so we have to decide the frequency of monitoring, then at what frequency it should be monitored. So most of line, it should be two to four hour in production line before, before starting of line and within every two hour, it should be monitored by the standards. So it, is, it should be defined when it will be monitored, where it will be monitored. It should be the defined place where it should be checked at the line and where it should be well defined in written. Next is how it will be monitored. There's a defined set of parameters and procedures, how it should be checked, it is working or not. So there should be a written protocol at what line speed any test piece enters and rejected at whatever how will decide how many times it should be rejected, what is the speed, what is the frequency, what is the size, what are the standards, everything should be monitored. Like calibration of weighing balance, it is not a CCP, but it should be, it is under, comes under the PRP. So it should be a verified, the weighing balance should be a start 30 minutes before the user, check where should be calibrated, cleaning and sanitization should be done in this process, this way, this set of chemicals should be used in defined concentration. It's everything should be defined. And the next is who will monitor. So we must have specified a dedicated person to monitoring of anything. Like it should be a line in charge, it should be an operator, it should be a manager or anyone. But it should be monitored by anyone, any defined person and it more roles and responsibility must be defined. Next is establish corrective action. What should we do if the our monitoring get not under limits? For example, if anything we are calibrating and it is not get calibrated and the result is not coming up to the uh, required limits then what are our actions it should be defined if my weighing balance or my chemicals or anything is not up to the mark then what are the action we have to do 
we have to stop the line is there any alternate solution what are the procedure we will hold the entire batch for example metal detector showing negative value it is not working so what we have to do so we have to hold the entire batch and pass again hold till the metal detector start working or we have to reject straightforward reject the to one day production it should be specified and written there should be a written document for this for every ccp oprb when it should be under breakdown and not working and any exceptional circumstances if it is occurs next establish six principle of hasep establish verification procedures verification procedures should be especially defined how to verify anything it should be written in sop format and training should must be given to all operators or users to how to do this and check this parameter established verification process consist of verification of monitoring and verification of corrective action all corrective action also must be verified if in the case of failure if something is not working then what are the corrective action and corrective action should be verified by someone make practical plans for checking whether the hasep plan is working or not last uh, pr principle is establish documentation whatever we should do it should be documented in a proper manner if it is not documented there should be no evidence in future for it is happen or not it is working even so everything should be monitored and documented and it should be verified by someone it is not like that that someone is doing and no one is checking or verifying it should be checked by done by someone and must be verified by the senior person supervisor line in charge or manager production that the kappa is taken or not the proper thing is working it should be checked ccp is verified by or not it should be cross verified everything to implement a good hasep next is tasep and vasep tasep and vasep is a new upcoming part in the fssc 2020 now it is a mandatory part of it as per version 5.1 so tasep is a food difference and vasep is the vulnerability which is unintentional or intentional contamination of product if we took this in the general way there is a very thin line between the food fraud and food defense it is the main difference is the food fraud is the intentional adulteration which is economically motivated whereas food defense is uneconomical or intentional or unintentionally harm of food if we say the in general example for uh, like if an employee is milling for a good promotion or it is supposed to that he have must have salary of 1 lakh or something else or for example sometimes in any for any reason you have escorting and you have said something to any employee or you can say unhappy employee and now he is decided to do harm of a company he has decided to resign the company and he is willing to go this is the last day of him and and he wish to do intentional harm of the factory or the product so in such way we have to think if someone took poison with her, him or and contaminate our product or not so in food defense we have to think in such way for example if a person willingly want to contaminate product so he can or not so ideally it should be our system is so tamper proof that if someone is intentionally or unintentionally want to harm the product then still it he cannot do the same 
unintentionally for example he is not willing to do the harm but for example he have put the pci chemicals sprayed somewhere else but due to unintentionally it contaminate the product so it is it is a chemical hazard so it is unintentionally but intentionally if the pci person or pest control person thinks that now he have to this is the last day of company and i have to harm the product and the close the company or anything he have intentionally think to harm the company or contaminate the product so he can do the same or not so answer is no our system should be temper proof our tanks should be lock under lock and key even no maintenance person can unlock the key everything should thing should be locked our production area food manufacturing plant should be under the cctv camera monitoring and cctv should be monitored by someone so even if someone want to harm still he cannot harm the product sometimes someone just for fun or intentionally from motivated or supported by competitors wants to harm the reputation of the company like he wish to for example very popular nowadays in whatsapp messages they are saying that someone have mixed the blood of the contaminated covid positive in the product of xxx company so it should be a tamper proof if someone wanted to harm still he cannot the harm the our food product so what are the control measures we have to do everything should be access in access control no one can access our recipe it should be also a motivated food fraud our recipe could be theft by someone and share to our competitors it should be economical motivated it should be a threat also a threat to our product like cyber crime our important data can be hacked by the computer it expert there should be a policy and the control measure to control our data so first is the food defense food defense is basically to defend our product by an intentional and intentional adulteration you can see here some example what are the food committed we can read one or two motivated for it should be motivated for money gain deliberately modifying the food to achieve more money or motivated to access excess money especially if perpetrator can identify a vulnerability next why did the agent target this organization someone target by due to ability to perpetrate pre the crime without discovery magnitude or financial gain compared to risk similarly how should the company react company will investigate the incident and identify vulnerability through the use of appropriate analysis tools the food defense may be the by the internal employees or by external agent it should be in hazard we are discussing only the manufacturing process and the hazard with the product and manufacturing line in food defense it also cover the product even the product enters in the into the market our packet should be tampered proof seal should be uh, evident otherwise in market it anyone can tampered or untampered the product or mislabel our product it should be economical motivated by the our competitor so our product must be some label identification like most of time you are saying in barcode are available in the products and as a specific hologram qr codes these are the basic food defense mechanism companies are using nowadays last i have remember i am remembering one incidents with ashirwad atta some local players are making ashirwad atta local brands and similarly packing in the similar looking packets of the same batch for multiple packs so it is a also a food food part of food defense it should be covered under it and, and company must have the mitigation plan to 
prevent is brand image and market reputation. So similarly, food in food defense and food fraud, both we we have to scoring the same thing in similar way. We are giving a number in the with the low relevance or higher relevance, and what are and according to that we have decided their mitigation plan. For example, for we are taking a simple example of raw material receiving for better understanding. Process is receiving of raw material. So what is the accessibility score? Accessibility if raw materials is under unloading. So it is under the driver contact of driver. Driver can manipulate or tamper the product raw material he can reseal or re tamper the raw material or substitute it or dilute it the raw material with any minor ingredient or intentionally or unintentionally can he contaminate the raw material these all things comes under the accessibility is that the our raw material whatever is coming is accessible to anyone or not it should must be not accessible to anyone till the use for and how do we monitor that everything should be evident and tamper proof seal that no one can tamper the trucks should be under the seal evident and transportation should be verified and valid transportation it should be and driver background verification should be there the employees background police verification that there should be not uh, someone from the terrorist background or intentionally come from any terrorist background to harm any organization or anything. So first thing accessibility for doing harm to anything it should not be accessible. So control the accessibility there should be a CCTV monitoring, preventive access control or physical barriers like lock and key and other measures to control the accessibility. And next is vulnerability control. If anyone is, if any material, our bulk or semi-finished product or finished product is accessible, is accidentally or by any reason accessible, we cannot control, kept the product in the controlled environment or not a controlled FG finished good product store or not a controlled raw material store. Then what is the score of vulnerability? For example, if we I have three shift production, so what are the storage tank? If someone accessible only in a small portion of the volume, for example, I have a storage tank of one thousand kg, uh, and it is accessible only. So if someone contaminate the product, it should be contaminated only 1000, not around my bulk tank, which are, which is the capacity of 10,000. So if 10,000 bulk capacity is under lock and key, only 1000 is accessible. So accessibility is very low. So if it is not that much low, but still it is low as per our bulk is safe. For example, if someone accessible only in fg product that he can they can accessible there they can manipulate that point so if we, they will they only do any uh, vulnerability it should be affected only our two hour production then it if or one shift production so vulnerability score is still low but if my bulk tank like 10000 liter or one lakh liter tanks is accessible by to anyone, then if any any variability or contamination occurs in the bulk tank, it should be hamper our one month or two months production, which can be done by the that raw material or SFG or anything. So the score is very high. So we in such way we are adding this and this number we are finding the three points we are considering in the food fraud and food defense is accessibility it should not be accessible to any person 
it should be under lock and key, CCTV monitoring, access control. There should be a log of key and anything. It should be even not accessible to maintenance person because maintenance is a person also can contaminate the product. So there should be a tool logbook if they are using a tool. So if they are, suppose they are picking 10 screws for maintenance work anywhere, anywhere and by default they have lost two and lost two screws. So there should be mentioned anywhere that two is two is missing. Otherwise what happens, two is two intentionally or intentionally might be contaminate into the product. And there should be a market complaint is this hamper our market reputation, brand image, and everything. So it should be not accessible, vulnerable. If something is vulnerable condition, it must be in lower quantity, like one not any bigger tanks, a storage area. It should be not in vulnerable condition. No one can access the, those area without the approval of the higher management or it, it should be only operated in the presence of higher management. Similarly, like master recipe should be stored when the system like that. There should be no cyber, the cyber safety, cyber security should be there. Otherwise, anyone can access the our master data. So in such way, we are deciding the uh, score by adding these three factors, accessibility, vulnerability, or volume score. And if this score comes to a specified number, like 20, 25, then we target a mitigation strategy. What can we do? And what are our control measures in the case of the failure? Or if someone in, we have get knowledge that something is going to wrong. So what are the, our mitigation plan and how do we control? Mitigation plan should be anything like controlling, controlling access, etc. And similarly, we are doing a giving you example for food fraud and for food defense and raw material receiving. This is a simple example format how we are deciding the what are the control measures and other things. Uh, simply we have discussed the receiving of raw material. What should be a food defense there and what should be a food fraud. Food defense we have already understood we will discuss later the food fraud also. Uh, what should be a for example in such way from we have received any raw material. What is the food defense? Food defense may be the vehicle integrity of the product. Vehicle should be tempered, sealed, can be broken, and anything, it should be accessible. So, but what are the probability and severity? Risk should be decided by the number, which is multiplied by probability into severity. So we have decided if the risk is higher, then there should be a monitoring plan. If risk is lower, then we should check the what are our control measure to reduce the parameters that there should, it is not be a risk. So for example, vehicle integrity, how do we confirm the vehicle is not, is integrated, not tampered. So we, we have control measures like visual infection of vehicle condition, good hygiene practices control, air curtain should be there, that no pest can enter with raw material in the, our factory premises. Verification of temperature, if the product is temperature controlled, if applicable, CCTV monitoring should be there, is there, you can check that every box is the same, there is no tampering and or any vulnerability or defect in the product. So is it sufficient? is now significant or not. So a score is coming below than four. It is only two. So it is not significant for this. But if there is there we have not control of air curtains, no CCTV monitoring, no visual inspection, then the severity 
and probability will be high and the score should be higher so we must have to do some mitigation plan to control these parameters similarly verification of analysis report we are doing this with the cross check with the quality parameters and the testing in house testing in in house labs so next point we which we are thinking there should be a higher for this is the example cases cross contamination at unloading is there is a chance of cross contamination at unloading probability is high severity is also high because someone is unloading the manpower is not that much literate they can contaminate one product with another they can skim milk mix skim milk powder with whole milk powder or oil with any one fat with any another fat or powder with anything could be happen so there is a risk so it should be a mitigation plan so when following slide we will check what we, what are the control measures we have taken for np next is what are the food defense condition of packaging it should be verified by prp so it is not a significant condition of handling tools and processor for unloading what are the pallets or anything that measurement tool or unloading tools everything with what we have ever you are using for example if we are using temperature gun for temperature check of truck so it should be calibrated or not as if it is not calibrated then there is will be a chance of it is giving the misleading the results and product is not okay next is storage of raw material this will be a chance of food food for defense in the storage of raw material so there is a high chance of food storage raw material but in some plant what which we are taking there is a training of employees if there is untrained employee it may there may be a chance of the non allergen material should be mixed with the allergen material and it will be a allergen contamination a specific norms are is defined or not for example if any material have too much have to store at 4 to 6 degree for almond nuts anything but uh, people are untrained and they kept the material and uncontrolled environment and product get spoiled so it is important that the storage norms is following or not for this we have the trained employees so it is not a significant but if any this if we have not these control measures then the probability or severity score will go high and the, we must have to there should be a risk and we must have the control measure or we we have to plan a mitigation what will be a food fraud in this receiving of material raw material is a part of process so food defense we have the these things there should be a food defense or uh, threat in the foods it should be the un temperature control not verified not cross chemical contamination or anything that things are we have covered now what about the food for if vendors we are whatever supplying to us is intentionally does something gray market substitution dilution anything the in product then why how do we check it is a product is good or not so what are the checks we have we must are have to procure the material from the approved vendors and routinely we have to do the vendor audits if we some for example if we, we are not getting product from our approved vendor and certainly we have purchased any material from any unknown person or the new vendor then there is a higher risk or chance that he have substitute the product he is not giving the product up to the mark he may dilute 1% or 2% something else in the or the low grade products in the food so there if for example any new vendor mix 1 or 2% low quality food in the product and supply it to us do we able to verify and identify that substitution dilution or anything the mixing or contamination anything 
so are we able to identify this thing or not this should be covered under it so we it is we is covered here because we had in this example we have approved vendor confirmed so the and vendor should be must be audit every time so most of mnc companies always audit their vendors at the defined frequency of 6 months or 1 years if the vendor is not fulfilling the requirement or non complying anything they are not taking raw material from those vendors and blacklist them so all the vendors must be verified and cross checked by the corporate audit or vendor quality audit and the second thing the material whatever we are taking should be checked by all param fssi external lab for all parameter recommended by fssi so we must we have to take the reports of certificate of analysis of any material whatever we are receiving and their external lab report of fssi it should be external nabl accredited lab not their internal lab so there is a assurity that the product is good and there it uh, after all these two checks there must be an internal lab quality check before the use of rm and pm if in same cases if there is a score or probability or severity is high it should be a risk to a product or factory so there should be a mitigation plan but in this case the company is maintaining these three four control measures and the score is low so it is good next is the storing of raw material the storing of received material as per guideline if it is not as per guideline some for example company have to add 2 kg for example 2 kg butter oil in a certain recipe and due to saving and economically motivated he added 1.8 kg butter oil and 0.2 kg palmolin oil so it is a substitution dilution and it is comes under the food for which is economically motivated so let's come on the food fraud what is food for food for mainly anything or contamination or alteration of product packaging anything which is economically motivated to gain the short term or long term gain or to expo spoil the market reputation of a customer by anyone someone or the competitor it is also comes under the food fraud for example what are the things covered under the food fraud is dilution dilution is basically the diluting the major ingredient with a with lower concentration or substitution concealment mislabeling gray market unapproved enhancement counter shifting so water down product using non potable unsafe water this is a example of dilution we have to use for example potable water but we have using a raw water so low grade water we have used due to the cost saving and it is a example of dilution next example olive oil diluted with potential toxic tea tree oil it is the most common dilution which we are found in market nowadays that the olive oil is costly it costs for example it is 1000 rupees liter and the toxic tea tree oil is 200 rupees liter then in certain proportion they mix any toxic tea or any other oil with olive oil which look similar to olive oil this is our most common examples like in milk they are using urea anything palm oil this is the most common examples nowadays which we are getting in as an example of dilution counter fitting copies of popular food not produced with, with acceptable safety assurance most of time we have seen the branded product like amul or sprite now sometimes earlier we have said 
Sprite. There is the only same bottle, same packaging, only one is spinning chain. Similar packaging is packed like Maggie, even Nestle Maggie. Ma spelling is only changed and the brand and packaging looks in yellow color. It is looks similar to original Nestle Maggie. And most of this type of product is sold in our rural areas like villages their people are not so illiterate and, and and able to differentiate between the branded and non branded product take are generally taking the product on the basis of the color and packaging so this is the counterfeiting next melamine added to enhance protein value this is also good example of it. use of unauthorized additive most of the companies like mostly spices and other use unauthorized additives to pro preservatives and additives to secure their products for and ex extend their shelf life and others. So for good example, I'm remembering is the mixing of stone crush or uh, color in the haldi and uh, spices like red chili powder uh, sunflower oil partially substituted mineral oil hydrolyzed later protein in milk these are doing in certain market most of we are getting the news that something is happened like this artificial milk most of it we are seeing this example poultry injected with hormone to conceal diseases injection in given to also the failure to good give high quantity of milk harmful food coloring applied to fresh food to cover defects expiring province unsafe origin nowadays origin in mentioning is also required as per fssi these are the major requirement because sometimes what happens they are mentioning the turkey make hazelnut but actually it is not from turkey so now it is mandatory we have to mention the origin of the product so it would be defined that its origin is this now it is mandatory earlier what happened people packing in anywhere putting product from anywhere and mark on them like Kashmir Kesha but it is not like that mislabeling mislabeling what happened they are mentioning anything that is doing it is the 80 percent fat or energy nutritional information or any allergen information or not declaring any allergen or any ingredient which is which may be important and direct selling to the market this is also not acceptable now chinese mislabeled recycled cooking oil sales of accessible unreported product gray market and production theft is also a part of food fraud most of time they happen they are mixing the inappropriate food or raw material with the original and substitute dilute them and sell in the market so thank you this is the three part HACCP, TACCP and VACCP. So you may proceed for your any questions. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes. Mm. There are some questions are there in chat box. Can you check please? Yes. not ma'am that box is not visible sir here is question uh, please Please explain about CCP decision tree slide. Okay.
TCP decision tree. Uh, it is like uh, we have to check the for in simple. I will tell you. The, if you find the, any hazard, which might not hazard, which might be a risk. Any hazard, if it is, it can be a risk. Then what is our control measures? The decision tree is like if it is covered in PRP. For example, if it is not clean, then it should be a hazard. If lighting is not improper, it will be a hazard. So how do we cover this? So we have defined the lux level, and it is covered in our PRP. If it is covered in PRP prerequisite program, then it should be covered in normal prerequisite program, and we have the control measure for it. So if it is not covered in prp program we have no control measures then it should be covered under operational prerequisite program and i am giving you a simple example if uh, someone is doing rash driving and going from this in and want or he is doing theft and going want to go from the uh, local city so what is the control measure so is there a control check post if it is or not if suppose if it is make miss so there is any another control point or police check post or their police station it is something like that that there what are the control measures you have to control the hazard to become a risk so if it is yes yes then does the process step eliminate or reduce hazard if it is no is the control at this step required for safety so if it is again yes then it is just like a cycle to conclude if so if it, it will be critical for ccp only if your answer is here yes then it should be a ccp if will subsequent process step eliminate or reduce hazard to an acceptable level if it is yes then it should not a ccp if it is no then it is a ccp and we have to treat it as a critical control point and every ccp should be a monitoring and establish limit and everything hello yes sir thank you sir uh, Sir, next question is, what can be the critical control point during bread making? Critical control point during bread making. Yes, sir. So you have to do the process uh, manufacturing, do the process flow diagram, and what are all your control measures in that their place? For example, if there is a metal contamination possibilities, you have the any metal metal detection. The sieving, so you have to check the availability. What are the things you are prerequisite program, or where the has? What are the hazards basically, and how you are covering those hazards? So basically, most of time metal detection, or this should be a CCP, but it depends on your process. So what is your process flow? How you are controlling your hazards? Then you can decide the what are the CCP you require. It should be a metal detection, sieving, or anything else. It depends what are your control measures. Hello. Okay. okay, sir. Sir, next question is, what is the CCP of T? CCP of T. Uh, Again, I am saying the same thing. If uh, most of the manufacturing units have different CCPs, it should be not uh, like an ideal that I have the defined anything as a CCP. So again, next factory should also be the same considered as a CCP. 
so it depends on what are your procedure what are your controls so there is no thumb rule that it will be ccp everywhere so it depends every all time it is depends on what are your process flow what are your control measures or and how you are controlling it is you have to decide on the basis of i have explained the scoring probability and severity if there is a probable and severe both score is high then it should be a ccp if you go through a CC, this method if there is a control measures if will a subsequent process stop eliminate or reduce the hazard to an acceptable level if it is your answer is yes it is not a ccp if it is no then it will be a ccp so any plant or eating process you have to check to this decision tree that it is come any hazard uh, including process what which it, if it could be a risk it is come under a ccp or not okay sir thank you sir sir one more question is there how can we differentiate between critical control point and critical control limits with example critical control point and critical, critical control limits critical control point is the process or a step which we need to eliminate or reduce the hazard to an acceptable limit for example if you are using a sieve so it is a ccp the process is or the step is a ccp but you have to use the 40 mesh for example you have validated that you have to use 40 mesh sieve so sieve size is 40 mesh or not you have to check or validate it if you use sieve, you are using for example you are sieving this is a processor but you are using a 80 mesh sieve so it is not defined that you have to use 40 mesh so how could you verify that you have defined this it should be 40 mesh or for example for next example metal detector is a ccp it should be reject the metal but what is will be the limit how much size it will be reject so if it is re rejecting one point i have validated that my metal detector should reject 1.8 mm ss so it should be reject minimum we have decide 1.8 but what if i have uh, purchased the metal detector who can reject only 2.5 mm ss he cannot reject 1.88 mm ss but our requirement is 1.8 mm ss should be removed so there should be limit should be decided on what are our requirements uh, is it clear Hello? yes sir yes sir sir one more question is there uh, is the person who is monitoring the system should be from hsccp team monitoring the system in what way is uh, your monitoring it should be a hsccp team hsccp team always consists not a single person the hsccp team should consist the maintenance quality production every department person should be in this team then we can finally decide a good ccp this is has a hsccp if only okay. one person for example if a quality guys make the hsccp is not aware about the requirements and the measures of the maintenance and production he cannot define the limits and he cannot even identify the what are the hazards he is not aware about the machine lubrication we not about the preventive maintenance program what are their requirement so there should be a team and the person is monitoring always it should be he should be a part of hsscp team any random person he is not knowledge about anything he cannot monitor na yes sir must have the trained person and trained and qualified and he must have the knowledge of that thing then only he can the monitor on or checks the those parameter if he is not aware even about anything or the system or the process and parameter he cannot monitor anything 
ओके सर एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज देयर इज एच एस सी सी पी सेवन प्रिंसिपल आर सेम फॉर टी एस सी सी पी एंड वी एस सी पी ऑल्सो नो टी एस सी सी पी सेवन टी एस सेवन प्रिंसिपल इज मेनली फॉर हैसेप दिस इज नॉट फॉर टैसेप एंड वैसेप ये दिस इज यू कैन यूज दिस but uh, tasep and vasep is slightly different from hasep in tasep you have to check everything in hasep we are checking the manufacturing plant only but in tasep we are considering the rm incoming fg dispatch if the fg is stored in warehouse if there is a chance of mislabeling threat or dilution anything it is also come under tasep it is not only the manufacturing plant if someone cyber crime most of other thing which is not hasap is basically based on your process and production plant based but tasap is overall food defense from farm to fork till the consumer ends it should be covered by the food defense it should be tamper proof your uh, packaging for example if you make a good product but you are not doing sealing or any tamper proof sealing process then anyone in market for example sablon we have prepared a good product sablon hand wash and there is no sealing procedure so anyone can you empty out the bottle and put the local hand sanitizer in that and if a consumer use that it should be a market complaint and uh, market reposition will as well so these things are also comes under the food fraud tasap wasap and these things like intentional unintentional and economical ben benefited like olive oil example with any uh, another oil it is a good is example for economic motivation most of companies like local players they are doing dilution they are not using the uh, upgraded standard quality products they are using normally low quality ingredients in their products and produce the products and send to the market these are also that comes under the tasap wasap so if you are doing a tasap and wasap you have to do and uh, you have to consider the interested parties also whatever they can like maintenance activities he can do harm to your product someone if intentionally want to harm you then he can harm or not these things are also covered under that like we are wearing seat belt for our safety so we have to what we have to do to save our product and market of so these are the things as if it is interlinked but is it is different hello okay sir uh, we got that thank you sir and thank you sir there further Thanks. they will contact with you uh, okay i will provide them your mail id okay ma'am okay thank sir you thank you. you thank you so much okay so today we are ending program here thank you thanks